Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, we are going to talk about this homebrew ICP RF generator. First, I hope you have seen the plasma ball forming in an arc tube in the previous video. So what is an ICP? This question has been answered by another plasma enthusiast. His video's link will be below. So, today we will mainly focus on the fixture. Let us take a look at the schematic first. At the first sight, this schematic is very similar to a HF SSTC. Here is the high tension end of the supply, the RF choke, the transmitting tube, this isolation capacitor blocking the high DC voltage and uh, this capacitor is the matching capacitor at the anode side. This is the main resonant coil and the feedback capacitor or it is also the matching capacitor at the load side and the feedback is taken from here to the grid of the transmitting tube. This is a filament supply. Um, I forget to draw the ground potential at the middle of the transformer, but I know, I guess that you understand that. Sorry for that. So, when we apply the filament voltage and the high tension, this circuit functions like this. This is a positive feedback loop into the tube, so the circuit will go into oscillation. And uh, now let's talk about some important components function. This one, I guess you know it's uh, function and this one also simple. This capacitor here is used to compensate for the impedance at the anode side. The capacitor between the anode and the cathode is not enough so I add this capacitor. This is a safety choke in case this capacitor have a shift through safety choke it will short out the high tension supply and this is the main coil which is located here and the strong magnetic field inside this coil created by the strong current induced into the coil can generate an inductive coupled plasma. If you use some long um, bus bars to connect the coil, some compensate capacitors can be added at the, at the bus bars. But you should keep in mind that this capacitor is not that large value. It can be made from some copper plates, okay, just between several picofarad range. 
And if you add this safety choke, you can eliminate this discharge resistor. I call it the discharge resistor. And if you use this discharge resistor, uh, if you want to eliminate this one for some reason, because uh, for example the enabled enabled wire gets hot because of the high frequency or something else, uh, if you eliminate this coil, but I do not, uh, I do not recommend that for safety reason. So if you do not use this coil, you should add this resistor here to discharge the rectified DC voltage in this part of the circuit. Oh, just in this part because here is a blocking capacitor here. Uh, why here will be some uh, DC voltage? Because the tube, the grid to the cathode functions as a diode, right? So the RF voltage will be rectified through this loop and some DC voltage will exist because here are two capacitors and you do not use this one also here here capacitors so here is not ground potential if you do not use this resistor that is just for some safety reason but um, in reality the high voltage or at least I do not uh, test some high DC voltage here, but that may cause the R cube to break down. Okay, so this is the uh, also the resonant main resonant capacitor, also the feedback part, and this is to protect the grid, right? Protect the grid and the parasitic choke here. Also, this is a grid leak circuit, grid leak. Uh, if you do not understand what this part is, you can refer to grid leak in Google. Um, I want to say that this coil should be wound by using some heavy duty copper pipes because when I use this uh, two millimeter outer diameter copper wire it becomes to smoke uh, after I apply the power for around six seconds so you really need some high duty copper wires here and the most importantly the choose of the vacuum tube. Here I am using the Siemens RS1026 triode, which is over there. And um, as far as I know, uh, by using a triode, uh, you will make the circuit much simpler because you can eliminate the uh, screen grid supply, right? Also, um, if you refer to the data sheet of a vacuum tube, you will see a graph of constant current curves. Uh, a, load a load line may be drawn, which represents the operating conditions of the tube. And if you use that line um, and uh, together with your certain operating requirements, you can determine the grid bias, the anode voltage, the grid impedance, also the anode load impedance, which will be matched here, and uh, some feedback uh, parameters. So in such a circuit, the load is not constant. But if you want to get a rather um, constant working condition, you should choose a low mu or low amplification factor tube. Because uh, from the load line, we can see that 
uh, if the grid, uh, the constant grid impedance and the constant output curve can be made to coincide, the output power will remain constant, regardless of the change in the load impedance. But while such an ideal situation is impossible, uh, if you use a lower power gain combined with a grid structure that has fairly low primary and secondary emission. Uh, if you do not know what is primary and secondary emission, you can refer to them, but that is not important. The output power remains quite constant over a significant range of load impedance. Uh, by use uh, incandescent light to test the output, uh, I use some RF diodes to, and together with a coil and also an incandescent light to pick up the RF power. I can see that the output power varies about 4 to 6 percent while the load impedance varies from 0.6 to 1.4 times the assumed value if I use this tube which has a low mu. So that is some basic um, basic theory of this ICP generator. Also um, here you can see I use some insulated board here and uh, some copper plates which is cut out from a larger piece and then I draw some holes for mounting the components and also the ground can be mounted onto this plate directly. That gives me a very good RF ground. So that is all about today's video. And if you have any questions, be free to email me. My email address is in the description of my channel. Thanks for watching and wish you a happy day.